Sputnik Girls' home is in Sri Lanka's northwestern province, seven kilometers from Kurnegula town, in a rural village named Kanumali. Sputnik provides a safe and nurturing home for 18 girls aged 5 to 18, for whom a parental home is not an option. Our girls come to us often after a very difficult start in life, and in need of the love and protection they deserve. This is how we go about fulfilling that obligation. In term time, all the girls have an early start, as in Sri Lanka the school day begins at 7.30 a.m. Before that, they wash and dress and come together in the dining room for breakfast. Little Chetana is just five, but is keen to start school next year. At 6.30, they gather outside and offer the traditional Sri Lankan gesture of respect to their Amma, or mother, who reciprocates with blessings for a successful day. Sputnik's family dogs like to provide security by chaperoning the girls on their 800 meter walk to school. After six hours of classes, the girls walk the 800 meters back in pairs, accompanied by a member of staff, chatting about the school day and how they will spend the afternoon. After lunch, cooked from scratch in the home's kitchen, and a little downtime, a typical afternoon begins in the garden, practicing the traditional Sri Lankan dances with Amma that were taught to the girls by their dance teacher. These dances and accompanying songs are handed down from generation to generation and are an important part of Sri Lankan cultural life. Besides that, they're great fun to perform. Little Chetana seems to be quickly getting the hang of it, copying her 17 elder sisters. Next to Buddha's statue in the lobby is a framed reminder to all the girls of the importance of respecting all other religions. This area also provides a quiet place for the girls to catch up on their reading. Amma loves playing with the girls, but there's always administration waiting for her in her office. From her desk by the window, she can keep an eye on the girls in the playground. Each girl has her own secure locker, where personal belongings can be accessed at any time, as well as individual gifts and donations of school materials that can be distributed when they are needed. Sputnik Girls Home was inaugurated in November 2007, thanks to the generous donations of many individuals and organizations, whose names are inscribed on the plaque in the entrance hall. The weekly classes from a professional art teacher have really helped the girls develop their inherent talents. 
The girls are divided into three groups named after three Sri Lankan lilies, Olu, Nelan and Mana. Each group has its own notice board to display drawings, paintings, essays and stories, so that they can all enjoy each other's work. The tables and chairs in the front and back gardens provide quiet and informal areas for reading and writing, whether for school or just for pleasure. Some girls learn to play the piano with the help of a local volunteer. Others learn to sew for the fun of it and as a valuable life skill. We're lucky to have training and advice from a professional seamstress. Art classes at the weekends give the girls an opportunity to explore their talents and enjoy each other's work. The back garden has a sheltered area where all the girls do their own laundry. Each group has its own washing line, identified by their particular lily. The girls sleep in bunk beds, protected by mosquito nets, in a shared bedroom that also has tables, chairs and plenty of storage space. The upper floor has a lobby area, two bedrooms, a private bathroom and a veranda. This is the accommodation for Sri Lankan and overseas volunteers. The rooms are simply furnished but comfortable, and the walls are decorated with Japanese, Singalese and English language aids. On the left is the children's play area, with swings, climbing frame and an area for reading. The building in front is the newly built Skills Training Centre, just next to our security hut and gate which are manned 24 hours a day. Under construction on the right is our new accommodation for girls who reach 18 but have no parental home to go to. This will provide a much needed stepping stone where our home leavers can live more independently as befits their age and learn more skills as young adults to prepare them for life in Sri Lankan society. Our current open air performance area will soon have its roof, keeping our audiences dry during the rainy season. The girls enjoy working in their own garden, which is fully organic. They grow and harvest their own vegetables, and best of all, enjoy eating them. But of course it's not all work, and the girls have television time to watch their favourite programmes. The girls love having animals around, and Saturday being a no school day, there's more time to make a fuss of our dogs, who help provide the home security, and our cows, who provide all our milk. And for any misguided men who think that cricket is an exclusively male sport, here's proof that women's cricket is alive and well in Sri Lanka. 
The girls would happily play all night. So finally, Amma comes out to bat to show them how it's really done. And it's a six. All children want to learn to ride a bike. And we thought it would be fun for the girls to learn to ride these unicycles. Why pay for two wheels when you can manage perfectly well with one? Well, almost. Little Chetana will be riding soon, but for now she acts as a very good stabilizer for any wobblers. In Sri Lanka, unicycles are usually only seen at the circus, so maybe the girls will have to form their own troop. Finally, Amma manages to persuade them all to come in for tea. After tea, it's time for singing, acting and telling stories. Sri Lanka is known for its tradition of shared singing, and the girls seem to have an inexhaustible supply of songs and dramas to perform. Or is it just that, like children all over the world, they don't want to go to bed yet? <laughs> 